Hello, I'm John Taylor and welcome to this brand new Toon Boom Harmony tutorial video series. In my last series that I did, I drew, rigged and animated a minion character from scratch. And in this new series, which I've entitled Basics, I'll be doing something very similar. So I'm going to start off by opening the software and over this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to make an animation from scratch. And we'll be covering a kind of cutout puppet style animation. So this series is really for people who are starting off fresh in the software. So if you've never used it before or you're, or you've just started using it, this series will hopefully give you lots of tips and tricks and advice about how to use Toon Boom to make a full animation. And in this series we will be doing exactly that. I'm going to start today by opening the software and showing you the kind of preferences and the layout. But over the course of the series I will be making an animation from scratch and kind of to show you how I go about it. And, I, and, I, and like I said before in my previous videos, you know, my way is not the way to do it. It's just the, the way I've done it for many, many years. But hopefully you can pick up some stuff off of me and hopefully that'll improve your work. So I'm a firm believer in sort of learning as we create. I think there's kind of two ways to learn. There's kind of the information way, which is basically you get all the information you can, you learn it all first and then you make something. Or the way I prefer to do it is to kind of learn as you go. So for example, rather than going through every single tool and showing you all the different tools and what they can do, I will show you a tool as I use it. Because I think that you'll, you'll, rem you'll remember that tool a lot better if you're using it and, and creating it. And, and also quite a lot of the stuff in Toon Boom you won't actually need to use, I don't think, on a regular basis. And if you find a problem along the way, you know, it, just go and learn how to solve the problem. Um, so that's basically what I'm going to do. So we're going to learn as we go and as we create this animation. So let's get on with it then. So I'm going to open up Toon Boom. So I'm, I'm using Toon Boom Harmony Premium and I'm currently using I think it's version 12.2 just so you know where, where, where we're at. Also there are three levels of Premium uh, of, of Harmony and Premium being the, the sort of the highest one. Um, so some of the features you see might not be in your, in your, in your version if you're using like, Essentials for example. Okay, so when you open it up, you get a window here. Now, this is quite important because in previous versions of, of Harmony or in or, of Toon Boom, you used to be able to create lots of scenes within your one project file. That's not the case in Harmony now. You have to create uh, a different project per scene. Um, so, for example, say you're doing lots of different camera cuts and stuff, you, you should do one project or one scene per shot. That's the easiest way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one called Mr. John... Taylor Basics 01 and I want to make, make sure you put it somewhere this I call like an animation folder so I'm just going to go to documents Mr. John Taylor I'm going to create a new folder here and then in this folder I'm going to name it animation so if I do create more than one scene I'll add all of those scenes into this animation folder so they're all going there so I've got the main project file and then, and then a folder just for the animation files so we'll choose that so I've got it set up currently as HD TV 24 frames a second you can also do 25 frames a second if you, if you prefer to just just make sure that when you're editing in say Final Cut Pro the um, the, the, the scene there is also the set at the same settings otherwise it might change the, or alter the speed a little bit so click create scene so when you first open the software you obviously get a nice fresh window like this one here um, but on a, and obviously t if you're brand new to it or you're moving across from another software this can look very daunting because there are buttons and options everywhere but it really is quite reasonably straightforward once you get the hang of it but obviously we'll go through that one bit at a time um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the, the um, basic sort of structure of the window here, the way I like to animate with it, and you can follow along if you want to and see if it works for you. Um, some of these toolbars at the top here and above the timeline might be missing on your version um, or currently in your window. If they are missing, just literally right-click on the window, on the toolbar, and select the one you want. So for example, the one with the um, rotate tool and stuff is the advanced animation uh, toolbar, so we can turn that on and off like that. We also have the deformer one turned on which is down here. Again that will become that will come in very handy so turn that on um, for now. And uh, Down here as well we've got the the timeline view toolbar. That sometimes can sort of turn itself off randomly. I don't know why. Well it does for me. But anyway to turn it back on again right click on the timeline toolbar and then click on there. Pops up. Okay. 
So this is basically how I, ha I have mine set up all the time. Apart from up here in this window, I like to add the different camera views so and the node view as well. So again, I'm going to click on this plus button and I'm going to go to side view and I'm going to do it again and go to top view and then I'm going to go to node view and also in this window I'm going to go node view because sometimes you need to look at the node view really really big okay like so so we have camera view we have the drawing view and we have node view now over here I've got the top view which is obviously the camera so for example this triangle here is your camera but again we'll come on to this bit a bit more in detail later and this is the side view obviously this is just a fixed camera at the moment but again don't worry about that too much for now I'll come into the kind of camera and moving the camera much later on in the series but for now this, this is just just getting the window set up the way I like it okay so that basically is how I get mine set up that's the th and this is how I work now I'm going to show you some of the preferences that I like to, to make sure it's turned on or off before we get going into the actual project. So I'm going to go to Harmony Premium or Harmony in the top corner and go to Preferences. And again, there are loads and loads and loads of these, which you can have a look at by all means. But I'm just going to show you the ones that I like to sort of work with. So obviously there are lots and lots of shortcuts, which again I'll come into as, as we kind of do the animation. And also we can change those as you see fit later. Um, but I'm going to come to the general page first, the general tab, and then there's a few on here that are really important. First of all is focus on mouse enter, which is this one here at the top. So let, let me just show you what that does. If I cancel this for a second. So if you can see at the moment, the camera window here has got the wrist, this red box around it. But as I move my mouse around the screen, whichever section of the window that my mouse is over, the, the red box moves to, which basically shows you which window is active. So, so for example, if I just draw you a very, very quick circle, just so you can visually see what I'm going to do, if I zoom in you, using the, the number two key and one for zoom out, if, I'm in, if my mouse is currently hovering over this active window, I press two, it will zoom in and out. But for example, say I'm zooming in and out and I move my mouse by accident down to the timeline, as I'm zooming, it will start to zoom in on the timeline. Now this can take quite a while to get used to, but I actually think it's really helpful having this turned on rather than off. Um, just personal preference. And it means you can quickly move around the windows and control each one quickly rather than having to click on each window. So for example, if I go up here again and turn it off, I then have to click on the window individually to make it switch control, which is a bit annoying, I think, personally. So that's definitely one that I'd recommend turning on. So now it can switch around and I can zoom in and out of my frames and my windows really, really quickly without having to um, click on them individually. So that's the first one. So the other one to mention on the general tab is the stop motion keyframes. Now this obviously depends on how you animate. And once again, we'll come on to this a bit later. Um, but basically, if you turn it on, it won't create the, the um, tweens for you or the interpolation in between your keyframes. So for example, again, it's, it's currently turned off, so they won't create them, so it will tween for me. So let me just make a peg for this circle. I'll just colour it in a colour, just so you can see quickly. Again, I'll come on to all this stuff that I'm doing here later on. Just bear with me for a second so I can show you this. Okay, so what I mean by, the, by uh, stop motion keyframes is, if I to create two keyframes, and move that a little bit. This line down here on the timeline has basically created that movement for me. So it's created the tween for me already. If you don't want that to happen and you prefer to work in more traditional kind of keyframes, you can turn that off. And again, or turn it on. So now if I just extend this out a bit, if I create another keyframe, another one, there we go, you see the gap here has, hasn't got this line, so basically the tweening is turned off. At the same time, it's really easy to, to, to turn it on or off. By clicking in the middle of the, um, the keyframes and clicking these two buttons here, we can turn it on or off. So it's really easy to, so it, it depends on how you like to structure your animation. If you're a person who likes to, first of all, keyframe them more traditionally, then obviously keep it on stop motion keyframes. 
Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to look at the node view and there's this one simple one here which is double click on the node opens the editor. I'd recommend you do that one because basically what it means is when you want to edit in the node view you can double click on it and it will open up the properties window. Without it, it doesn't do it. Um, so that's just a really simple one. So the next one to look at is the advanced tab. Now under here we've got a few important ones. For example, the support overlay and underlay art basically means these four boxes here on the edge of the camera view. Now each drawing layer has can, can have up to four separate layers. Now these are not sort of timeline layers. These are in, these are layers within each drawing. So you have your line art for your for your lines, your color art which is the C for your color, and then your overlay and underlay layers. Now obviously most of the time we only use the line and colour art layers but sometimes, particularly when rigging these cutout kind of characters, the overlay and the underlay can be extremely helpful. So make sure that's turned on because I'm pretty sure that we'll use that during this animation. Um, advanced display, advanced palette lists, you can have those turned on, they're quite helpful sometimes. Um, the other really important one here is this element node, animate using animation tools, default value. And that one you should have turned off. Now what that means is if, if I turn it on for example, start off with, we'll go back to our, our circle, we have this plus next to our, our drawing layer. And so what it means is if I just delete these keyframes just very quickly, it means that I can select this drawing and move it along and the keyframe goes onto the drawing layer, not the peg. So again, you can basically then set up different keyframes on the peg. So it gets really confusing. Um, some some people I, I know do actually like having that option, but I, I don't. I prefer to have all my keyframes on the peg layer. So I always turn that off. So again, go to advanced and make sure it's turned off. So now that's turned off, if I create a new drawing and call it a square, or something just for now you'll see that this drawing layer down here doesn't have a plus next to it and that's really important so always make sure you draw on a drawing layer that has no plus and that's that's controlled by that option in the advanced tab so now for example if I just draw a square and color him in blue if I try and let me just extend this out now if I try and move this blue one, I can't actually move it. It doesn't allow me to because it hasn't got a peg. But if I add a peg to it, I can now move it and the keyframe goes onto the peg layer. So with those few sort of changes made to the window layout and the preferences, I'm now ready to start my work on my project. But I have a question for you. For this animation, do you want me to base it on Batman or Star Wars? Uh, leave a comment in below and let me know what you prefer, Batman or Star Wars. And in the next video, I'll start creating based on your decision. So thanks for watching. Uh, it's been hopefully reasonably quick and hopefully helpful for those that are starting off. Don't forget to visit the Toon Boom website to get your free trial. Again, the link is in the description below. Please do subscribe. And if you want to watch my previous series, which is all about the minions, then uh, click on the big moving button above my head. And I'll be back very shortly with the drawing episode. And don't forget, get voting. All right, Star Wars or Batman. All right, <laughs> bye for now.